The Mandalorian, Season 2, Episode 5, Chapter 14, The Tragedy. Directed by the Robert Rodriguez and written by Jon Favreau. Just when you thought things couldn't get any better after the previous episode, this creative force pulls out all the stops and makes a fantasy of so many diehard Star Wars fans come true. Tython. We are headed to Tython to seek out any other potential Jedi contacts. Now, after last week, I expected Tython to be toward the end of the series, but I am delighted we are hitting the main story quests back to back to back. And boy, do the stakes get raised in this episode. Spoilers. Spoilers. Let's talk about the atmosphere. Now, when they scope out this encampment on Tython, you can feel the mystery and the ominous aura, so much so that I completely forgot they are shooting this inside a studio. When I have a behind the scenes understanding of how the magic is created, you, you, know, you can see the seams at times, but I was so enraptured with the story, so captivated by the action, and the lighting felt like everything was outside. I would bet any layman audience member would say it was shot on location without exception. Now, when it comes to technology, this continues to impress me. Remember what it was like when George Lucas was making the prequels and the green screen, blue screens? It has gone so further in the future with technology, but George Lucas laid the groundwork for this technology to exist, for the technology that I have in my studio today. It's thanks to George Lucas and his team and his efforts. Very impressive. Now, the shot of this ship, this ship I never thought I would see on screen again in my life. I felt such a rush, like millions of, dar of uh, diehard Star Wars fans suddenly shouted for joy, and I joined the chorus. <laughs> now, growing up, there was so many thoughts and theories that I would discuss with friends at school, at slumber parties, on camping trips. What if Boba Fett survived? And here he is, Boba, having survived the desert sands of Tatooine. The crate Dragon ate the Sarlacc pit that was currently digesting him for a thousand years. He has scars from what look like burns, acid burns, digestive acid burns, and I'm sure battle scars. I wondered how his father was linked to the Mandalorians, you know, he, how he was able to secure the armor and that it was passed down to Bulba after Jango was defeated via decapitation by Mace Windu. An heirloom of my father that would give me an edge in a tough galaxy <laughs> and the way he quotes his father is definitely a classic. And I'm super happy that Ming-Na Wen makes a return as Fennec Shan. Now, she's been patched up with some mechanical pieces to keep her alive, but damn, does she kick ass. Now, the end of the episode teaser back during the Gunslinger episode in season one hinted towards this where you heard, where you heard that spur clang as somebody was walking up to her dead body. Well, it was Boba Fett, as many people predicted. And this was a great setup. She really had her own awesome fights and awesome moments in this episode. In particular, a 360 no-scope shot. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, look at this shot. Look at it. Robert Rodriguez said we are doing a 360 no-scope shot in Star Wars, and he did. Hashtag 420. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I want to see Ming-Na Wen as Fennec Shan kick some more butt. She did an amazing job. But this shot right here, folks... The Empires track the Razor Crest and they send forces to secure the asset. And as Fennec and Mando are outnumbered, Boba heads to the Razor Crest to grab his armor. And what happens next? What happens right before this shot is what every diehard fan would put on his Star Wars wish list. Boba Fett kicking ass and taking names. And the slow motion sequence after he drops the bomb from the air, lands behind the stormtrooper and just towers over him before he knocks him out. Yes, yes, yes. And you have to imagine as well, you know, being a kid, a diehard Star Wars fan, seeing so much of these characters in such a limited time frame allows your imagination to run wild. What type of adventures would 
this character have out in this crazy giant galaxy? Well, we get to see some of those adventures come to life. And man, does Boba Fett kick some ass in this show. You could feel, you could feel the level of how monumental this event was because the, the show is being created by humans that understand Star Wars. I am so freaking proud of this team as a lifelong diehard Star Wars fan. This is worth the wait. From a creative standpoint, too, you think, how do we bring back a character such as this, such as Boba Fett? Let's use the same actor that we used in the prequels, and let's showcase his fighting style with him without a blaster. Oh, yes! But then let's also tie in a bit more of the lore, which they do at the end, after Boba shows Mando using his uh, wrist indicator, that this armor was his father's Jango, and Jango was a foundling! taken in by the Mandalorians and he was just a simple man trying to make his way <laughs> in this universe in this galaxy yeah what what an amazing payoff and you you could just feel how excited everybody was to be a part of this episode action-packed phenomenal all right enough <laughs> enough praising we'll praise it a little bit more here we got to talk about the stakes because the stakes get raised the dark troopers more machine now than man do they look intimidating and you know do, do they have force powers or are they just enhanced to not to to uh have force dampeners around them i, I we're gonna see them in a fight you know obviously but a lot of theory crafting is gonna go around these troopers uh and what their capabilities really are. So these dark troopers, more machine now than man, twisted and evil. They secure the asset and the razor crest, the razor crest is gone. It's obliterated, it is wiped out, but a few items survived. The little token from the shift handle on the ship that Grogu loves and the spear, the best car spear. Now it could have ended there on a very, very sad note. And this is, this is an emotional episode, very emotional episode. But then something happens that I can't even believe is going to happen. And it's the best decision. It's the best creative decision to make if you have all the tools right in front of you. And it's that Boba Fett, Fennec Shand, the Mandalorian Jin, uh, Din Djarin, possibly Cara Dune, and Bill Burr are going to rescue the child. What a setup for the last two remaining episodes. I think the next episode will be them breaking Bilber out. But if they just made it like a quick opening sequence, like the quick open action sequence of breaking him out and telling him, hey, we're going to go rescue the kid if you want your sentence to be uh, uh, reduced. And then boom, they start to head off and, and head towards where Gideon is. Yes, that's how I would do it. But we'll see if it's going to be a whole episode of a prison break to get Bill Burr out of there. But <laughs> Yes! Two episodes to go. I'm so freaking excited. This is such a payoff as a Star Wars fan. As you can tell, I'm out of words to use to praise. Uh, but what did you think of this episode and how pumped were you to see Boba Fett back in action? Let me know in the comments down below. Robert Rodriguez, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, Pedro Pascal, everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you online.